In the writings of the ancient Hebrew prophet Zechariah, we are warned of strange looking flying craft appearing in the last days. Then the angel that talked with me went forth and said unto me, Lift up now thine eyes and see what is this that goeth forth. And I said, What is it? And he said, This is an ephah that goeth forth. He said, Moreover, this is their resemblance through all the earth. To get at the actual truth behind these ephah shaped craft, we have to go all the way back to the days of Jared son of Mahalalel and father of Enoch. In those days, God chose Semyaza to lead 200 from a class of angels called the Watchers. They were to go preach to mankind from Mount Hermon. Dutifully obeying their orders, the Watchers boarded their Merkabahs and headed down to the earth to teach mankind. reached Mount Hermon, they saw that God had made the daughters of men very fair and beautiful. In fact, an insatiable lust for them rose up within every one of the Watchers. The Watchers decided to defile themselves with earthly women akin to how the dragon had contaminated the line of man earlier. They each chose one wife from amongst the children of men, in order to beget children of their own. The hybrid abominations resulting from these unholy unions walked halfway in the physical, and halfway in the spiritual realms. They were called the Nephilim by some. Titans, Jotna, Azurus, and the Anunnaki by others. Their heads were oblong shaped, and had 24 fingers and toes. The Nephilim were of enormous size. Towering over normal sized humans as the giants from the myths of old. Some were extremely intelligent, while others were mere lumbering oafs. Due to their sheer size, the Nephilim were incredibly strong beyond imagining. Lifting, stacking, and even heaving boulders and monoliths were mere child's play to them. They built many gargantuan structures that today still baffle the greatest modern mind. These giants toyed with grown lions like human children do with kittens. They became renowned for their amazing feats of strength, and mankind was powerless to stop them, and their descendants from taking over the world as the evil kings of men. The Watchers taught their evil children many secrets of heaven like metallurgy, weaponry, warfare, psychology, politics, medicine, witchcraft, hermetic magic, deception, secrecy, ciphering, and tremendous technologies from weather manipulation to advanced communications and transportation. The Fallen Watchers even taught the Nephilim how to make a physical version of their spiritual Merkabas. These material anti-gravity vehicles were called Viminas. The Viminas, often symbolized by a winged disc, could travel in the fluids of water, air, and ether. Their propulsion systems were based on concepts, like mercury plasma magnetic vortices, constructive implosion, and real force.
There are ancient records of V-Manas all over the planet. The best records are those of the keepers of the secrets in Tibet. Their enormous Kanja, Tenja, and other codes tell many details of these chariots of the Nephilim as well as other important information. Manchur consists of over a thousand volumes containing the holy texts of Lamaism. Their secret code is the most complex ever devised. To date, only one one-hundredth of the Kanjur has been deciphered. The resulting translations are full of references to gods appearing in the sky, of the luminous pearls and transparent spheres in which they lived. Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa, men have named you. The best publicly known records of Vimanas are the myriad descriptions of them in the Indian Puranas, Vedas, epics, and other ancient literary works. One work named the Vaimanaka Shastra gives very detailed information on these ancient flying machines from their propulsion systems to even how to make them. The Vimanaka Shastra, or science of aeronautics, indicates the Manas used a propulsion system based on a combination of gyroscopes, electricity, and mercury. Is this possible? Mercury is an unusual element. Mercury is metal, it's also a liquid, and uh, is a conductor of electricity. Now, there's unusual things you can do with mercury. You can put it into a closed gyroscopic device with mercury spinning around and then you can electrify it. And studies have been done by, on this by NASA and by other scientists and they find that you have levitation effects, anti-gravity kind of effects and a spinning bright light is part of it too. This talks about mercury rotating and driving some sort of a powerful wind or a windmill effect. These Indian V-Manas were used to fight against the Asuras that lived on the White Island continent of Attila. The inhabitants of Attila were much more technologically advanced because of the secrets revealed to them by their fathers, the Fallen Watchers. Their V-Manas were much more advanced, and they even had a superior new type of craft called Vilex. The great war between the ancient Indians and the Asuras of Attila encompassed not only the entire Earth, but was said to even have spread as far as to the moon itself. Having no atmosphere nor much water, corrosion on the moon is minimal at best and leaves open the possibility that evidence of this great war still exists, if it did really occur. Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa, men have named you. Attila would have succeeded in subjugating the world, if not a sudden rise in ocean water had not engulfed the White Island continent. Azure is still aloft in Vimanas flew into the hollow earth, to dwell among the Hyperboreans and the Nagas. After the Great Flood, giants and Vimanas have been randomly sighted periodically all through recorded history.
V Manners were seen on two different occasions helping the young Alexander the Great with vitally important military campaigns. The first time seen coming out of the Jaxites River when fighting against the Scythians, and the second time they were seen helping Alexander destroy the walls of ancient Tyre. His empire united both the exoteric and esoteric worlds. text from Columbus's log has been made available to the History Channel by archivists at Fordham University, custodian of a rare handwritten copy. Almost 1800 years later, we have another famous incident. Right before reaching the Americas, Christopher Columbus recorded in his logbook that he and his crew spotted a Vimana come up out of the ocean, hover for a time, and then fly away into the sky. Five millennia after the Great Flood, occultists began to search for the lost land of Attila and its extremely advanced technology, in order to use it to subjugate the world for themselves. They sought the descendants from the survivors of the Attila catastrophe. After little success in South America, Egypt, and India, they finally hit pay dirt, when they made an expedition into Tibet and the surrounding area. The Tibetan monks of esoteric Buddhism told Satan's chosen people, if they could deliver a sacrifice of six million of the chosen people of God, then Sanat Kumara himself said they could have all the secrets of Attila. This included access to the coded records, location of the mummies of the ancient survivors of Attila. Even how and where to dig up the punished watchers, and even the location of Attila itself along with all its evil technology. Attila was now called Antarctica. After the Nazis eagerly carried out their sick part of the deal, they voyaged to Antarctica and built base 211. They found the flash-frozen technology of Attila below the ice, covered in ancient runes. They also started the long process of finding and digging up the watchers to help them retro-engineer all the advanced technology being rediscovered. Knowing that most of the Watchers were buried in the deserts of what was now the United States, the occult elitists devised another evil ruse. They would have a semi-secret war in the Antarctica between the Nazis and the US. The Nazi generals would put up a good enough fight to sell the ruse, but for the most part allow America to win. The operation was called Operation High Jump, and was led by Admiral Richard Byrd famed for having flown into the Hollow Earth through the North Pole entrance. The enormous Task Force 68 fleet arrived in Antarctica in late December in 1946. Shortly after reaching the Nazi base in New Swabia, the first battle involving the manners, since anti-diluvian times commenced.
the Americans took the confiscated technology and occult Nazi scientists back to the United States with them under the guise of Operation Paperclip and Odessa. There they could work together with the American occultists of NJ-12, as they created deep underground military bases referred to simply as dumps. From these they could more easily dig back up the fallen watchers. From these dumps like Area 51 and S4, they could work on the Antichrist's New World Order army, while incrementally releasing some of the technology to the public. Most of it would be suppressed, until they used it to create their New World Order, a super advanced, scientific, worldwide dictatorship. Here they could also develop modern V-Manners and Vilixi, plus work on holography, harp, and other advanced technology found in the Antarctica. The Watchers could also create a new brood of Nephilim via the guise of alien abduction. These new gigantic Nephilim, the Fallen Watchers, the Nagas, Fourth Reich Nazi Ubermensk, and all the new V-Manners and Vilixi will be a part of what is known as the Strong Delusion. The Strong Delusion is basically a complex scenario of false flags involving supposed alien invasion, and so-called disclosure. The good alien versus bad alien pretext will be employed for the maximum effect, in trying to fool the conditioned masses. They want the final result of all this deception to be a one world government, thus bringing in the evil seven year new world order. I will not be pushed, filed, stamped, indexed, briefed, debriefed, or numbered. My life is my own. For official purposes, everyone has a number. Yours is number six. I am not a number. I am a person. understanding reckon the number of the beast, for it is a human number. Its number is 666. The state has proven that there is no God! The idea is that every single human being is Christ. The fallen archons will pretend to be the Galactic Federation of Light that has come to defeat the so-called Greys, Reptilians, and their minions known as the Illuminati. Piloting what are called light ships, they will give humanity tremendous technological help, and bring in a false peace for three and a half years. After that, mankind will see, that it was all a very clever deception. The fallen archons will use their light ships along with the Antichrist's Vimanas and Vilixi to fight against God's Merkabahs in the final battle, foretold of in Revelation 12 7.